Greetings, this is Sparklet here, and I am thrilled to have you here with me. Today we are embarking on a delightful journey alongside our friends from the Hawaiian Islands to explore the enchanting Tseswana Castle. I promise to make this experience captivating and engaging. While we wander through the castle corridors, I will share some intriguing and lesser known tidbits. Our adventure begins with the fascinating story of Baron von Wolf, a charismatic figure who created the Tseswana Castle in 1894. This German Baron, whose family had held ownership of the castle and its adjacent estates since 1815, has quite a story to tell. Remarkably, they acquired the whole property for the 246 silver rubles. But that's not all. Baron von Wolf built the palace upon the ruins of a 14th century fortress designed as a gesture of love. The architect behind the Sesvan castle was Hans Griesbach, whose work was all the rage in Berlin at the time. Interestingly, this happens to be Griesbach's sole creation in the Baltic states. Known for his pension for architectural extravagance, Griesbach seamlessly blended various styles into the castle's design, much to the delight of the Baron. This was a place of opulence and luxury, boosting amenities like electricity and internal telephone network and even water supply and sewerage, a perfect setup for hosting European friends for hunting escapades. And in the evening lose half of his fortune playing cards. People say that if a card fell onto the floor during the game, he would pick it up in a really fancy way. He would take out the biggest bill, lit it on fire and use the light to find the lost card. In 1903, Adolf and his brother Voldemar bought the first cars and sent their coachmen to drive a course in Cessis town. After a two-week study, the newly minded drivers traveled at about 70 kilometers from Cessis to Cessvayana two days. Later, the Wolf brothers arranged the first auto race in the district along the Psko Highway, inviting to a competition their friends, landowners from St. Petersburg. Voldemar Wolf was driving a car, one of their friends flew a glider. The wheels won. In general, the Baron was a very rich and adventurous person. This is the entrance to the evil tower of Sesvaina, but having learned its story, we didn't dare to get up there. We went to another tower. In Sesvaina, there is a sense of eerie presence, though not as dense as in the medieval castles. The castle itself holds its own mystique. Its features are solitary tower, sometimes referred as a ghost tower, which boosts four windows but lacks a door. <laughs> okay. A tale circulates that treasures like jewelry or gold might have been sealed within its walls. Yet presently nobody dares to investigate this claim. According to local belief, anyone brave enough to peer within, let alone climb it, faces an untimely end. Remarkably, this belief has seen some unsettling confirmation. So we can open the door can go and get outside to the beautiful terrace here and walk around the terrace and see around. Overly curious principals from the former Sesvane Gymnasium, Arthur Savage and Janis Skuinc, each separately gazed through the forbidden window from the rooftop. Astonishingly, neither met a natural fate. 
similar outcomes awaited two graduates of the gymnasium. While some scientists see these incidents as mere chance, they offer simple explanations to the enigmatic tower. Professor Oyar Sparitis, for instance, suggests that during the castle's construction, the tower was initially finished on the lower level. Subsequently, they opted to enhance it, resulting in the addition of windows. Curiously, even these learned individuals refrained from venturing up. Science has its limits, but who can say for certain? And a beautiful Cessna castle on the top of one of the towers. And you can see to all four parts of the castle. And just enjoy the beauty of it. It's wonderful. Fate spread even the firefighters on that fateful day, December 5, 2002, when flames engulfed the castle leaving most of it consumed by fire. to work here. Too tall, yes, let's keep going. We are going down. We are going down and it's lovely. It's much better than going up. <laughs> we're almost done. Yeah, we're almost done. German Baltic Adolf Gerhard Boris Emil von Wolf was born in the Kingdom of Prussia, now Germany in Wiesbaden, near Frankfurt, on May 1st, 1857. He was the eldest son of five children. Adolf spent his childhood in Wiesbaden, where he also attended gymnasium. After his father's death, his family moved to Zeswein. He studied law and economics at Tarbata University. During this time, he met the love of his life, Lotte Elks Nakalnia. They had four illegitimate children out of wedlocks. Late in 1885, Adolf von Wolf married Anna Natalia Stahl von Holstein, the daughter of the Capitan of the Court of the Russian Tsar and the Landrate of Livonia. She lived for 71 years. Two children were born in their marriage. Adolf's life was cut short in his prime years when at the age of 47, suffering from the long-term illness, presumably a tumor, he went to Vienna, Austria for treatment, where he died on March 25, 1904. His last wish was to be buried in Zesweine Hill. Embalmed, he was brought to Zesweine by a railway. He was met at the station by an invisible crowd of people, a black-covered carriage pulled by four black horses and escorted by 60 people with torches brings a coffin to the palace. On the morning of the funeral, June 3rd, the coffin is taken to the church for a farewell services. In the evening, he is taken to the Sasvan Mount for burial. Friends, members of the corporation, relatives, people from the neighborhood say goodbye to the Baron. His only legitimate son Wilhelm visited his parents' grave for the last time ten years later in order to sell the last property, the brewery. He died in a car accident in Germany because he inherited a fatal passion for fast and reckless driving.
in addition to the law of the born offspring of the fallen Adolf Wolf, there were many children occurred on the site. One of the baronial granddaughters, Lilia Kalmenya, when she first showed up at grandfather's estate, told an amusing story of his love. According to the story of Lilia Kalnin, Adolf Wolf met the grandmother quite by accident. He once rode in a carriage to friends, and on the road, on the lake, he saw girls washing cloth. Everyone rushed to bow at his feet and kiss his hands, and one, far from being the most beautiful, proudly stood aside. Well, hello, Baron, she said, and broke his heart. Adolf offered the proud woman a job as the maid in his castle. In the spring she returned to her husband, and in the summer she gave birth to a son, Janis. One after other the lady gave birth to three more sons, illegitimate wolves. The baron openly cared for his boys, helped with education, and also shared property. On December 5, 2002, a fire broke out in the castle. All the town people fled to the burning walls and hopelessly contemplated the death of the castle. The official version of the cause of the tragedy is not compliance with the fire safety rules. There are a lot of unofficial versions. They say that such a speed of fire is simply unrealistic without outside help. But whose help was it? According to some reports, in the 50s, when the roof was being changed, the KGB found a golden treasure in the attic, the legacy of one of the richest residents in the local area, Baron Wolf. They say that no less gold-bearing vein lay under the castle in the emptiness of the countless unexplored underground passages and cellars, and that baronial treasures can also be hidden there. There is a possibility that the arson was committed by one of the Wandal treasures hunters so that later they could freely rummage through the ruins. But no one ever found the treasure. According to the testimony of local residents, the surroundings of the castle are periodically flooded with mysterious search parties that are actively digging in the ground. They are hiding in their bowls and are unlikely to know. I would be grateful if you leave your feedback on whatever you liked my story during our walk through the castle. In my next film we will continue our work with our Hawaiian friends and we go to the city of Madonna. Like and subscribe to my channel, watch my videos and enjoy your life, your sparklet.